All right, today let's go over a topic that I think you're going to be hearing more and more about, especially throughout the current generation with the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series, and that would be game budgets. From time to time, we'll hear about what it costs to make a game, but for the most part, it's kind of kept in secrecy, and occasionally we will see games have their budgets shown, and while they match up in terms of the amount of money it costs to make them, they necessarily don't add up when it comes to the quality of these games, and we have a pretty good example just recently when it comes to Saints Row and Horizon Forbidden West, because somehow these two games cost nearly the same amount of money to make. At least that's what's going around right now with some of these news headlines. I wanted to go over all of that though here today. So if you guys enjoy the video, make sure you like it and subscribe to the Small Wave Plus channel if you are new. Let's first head over here. This is over on Push Square saying Saints Row sales flop forces parent company to change its policy on new games. Each project has to earn its right to exist. So first of all, if this isn't obvious, the Saints Row franchise is pretty much in trouble, and I wouldn't be shocked if it just goes away for a while now. I mean, who knows when we see it, if ever, again. The only thing with that is Embracer, they do like to cast a wide net, would be the best way to describe it, based on their current schedule with development where they have what like 30 triple a projects or something in development so who knows they could circle back around here or do what they've done quite often and that's remaster older games so they maybe go back and remaster some of the old saints row titles for the end of this generation or even into next generation with like a playstation 6 version of saints row 1 2 and 3 something like that anyway the the point here is saints row reportedly cost roughly a hundred million dollars to make. Now, I want to also outline something here. While there is a lot of detective work going on, uh, uh, looking at financial documents, kind of getting the word behind the scenes, the hundred million dollar mark doesn't necessarily uh, differentiate if that's, okay, all development and then marketing, or if that's just development, or when you bring in marketing, it definitely balloons the overall cost. It, some of these companies can spend as much to develop a game as they do to market a game. I mean, especially now with how many games are coming out, to really try to take a game and just get it out there to everyone or as many eyes as can, possible to see it, it's going to cost quite a bit of money. But in this case, they do talk a bit about the the effect that Saints Row, which did not do well for them. Obviously, critically, we saw how poor its release was. But even when it comes to sales, even on the sales charts, it basically fell off completely. They seem to be taking a look at this and say, you know what? Maybe we don't have to go all in necessarily with $100 million on projects that we're not necessarily sure of 100%. As they say, making a healthy risk-adjusted profit on games. We'll increase our efforts to put quality first even further and make sure we create unique, positive player experiences. So the thing with Saints Row is clearly something happened in development that just changed the direction or the scope or something because the game itself feels very disjointed if you play through it. I went through the initial storyline, like the basically the main storyline they have. Is obviously, they have, they have like different things you can do on the side. And I did a few of them, but towards the end, they want you to do a lot of, I'm going to say very boring and repetitive tasks to get like the final thing at the end. And that goes beyond the, the uh, initial conclusion or climax of the storyline, but a hundred million dollars for saints row. And then we look at another budget that was recently disclosed to us. At least this is according to IMDB with a, apparently a fact that got out there through trivia, which is that Horizon Forbidden West budget topped 110 million euros. It's Netherlands' most expensive media production. All right, so Horizon Forbidden West, significantly higher quality than Saints Row. A very good game. And one that if it costs Sony 110 million euros, yes, it does put it within proximity of Saints Row's overall budget. But in terms of sales, I feel like Horizon Forbidden West will end up being a, a much bigger success overall for Sony. I think, if I had to really guess, I would probably place Horizon Forbidden West 
seven, eight million maybe sold overall at this time, right? So a year later after it released at $110 million or a million euro budget, which is nowadays pretty close to $110 million, that's actually pretty good if you sell seven or eight million. And now it's going into their subscription service, which will just help to push that recurring revenue forward for Sony. And then let's face it, they'll eventually release it on PC and maybe 10 years from now, they'll circle back a remastered or, or something there. So Horizon has a, a bright future still, whereas Saints Row was basically beaten down by critics and then completely fell off the sales chart. So I guess the question is, while we have budgets that are very similar here, why are they so similar? I, the only thing I think of is, one, if we just put aside the idea that we don't necessarily know the marketing versus the full development budget, like, are they actually added together here? Or these, if we just say this is all development, Saints Row was in development for a while. It, it was, and it, it got delayed pretty heavily. Obviously, a lot of the feedback for it at its initial reveal was not great. So I feel like the twists and turns that happened there in development just continued to tack on more and more when it came to money that had to be dumped in for them to just get it out the door. However, we do also see games like the Callisto Protocol that reportedly cost $160 million to make, and that was done in about three years. So just because I guess something is in development for a long time doesn't necessarily, or something that's in development for a short amount of time, doesn't necessarily mean that then the budget is also smaller. Although Callisto Protocol, I, I would say even versus something like Horizon Forbidden West when it comes to the, the, the visual quality and fidelity, it was very, very high. That is a really good looking game, but I think they put a lot of the money into the visuals when the, they probably could have done more in terms of the, the gameplay and the even the scope uh, of the title itself. But this is the problem we're running into now. And I think it's going to continue is that you are going to see games like Saints Row and you could even say the Callisto Protocol because the parent company with them in striking distance, not too thrilled with the sales where it's trying to get to 2 million sold at this point. And that's the numbers don't add up then. You're going to see some of these games like a Saints Row just absolutely destroy studios. Like they'll just go away if they can't meet these ballooned expectations because of the budgets around these games. And I've mentioned before that there is a possibility of almost a crash in gaming because of the budgets and how expectations everywhere continue to climb. Sean Layton had mentioned at one point that it's really throughout this generation, he's mostly talking about Sony, but I think it can extend elsewhere with some of these budgets we're seeing. $200 million could become a reality if it's not already one because we're not getting all of the budgets relayed to us. And then you get to a point where you have to play it really, really safe if you're a company like even Sony, who they rely heavily on their PlayStation brand to make them profit, right? You're going to be like, okay, what, what sells for us in the past? That's what we're going to do now and where we're going to dump a lot of that money. So you may not see a lot of these creative endeavors from a platform holder who's trying to be a bit more conservative about where their money is going. And yeah, you will see kind of that Sony formula that we have now where it's that narrative driven single player, third person action adventure just be applied continuously across the board as they have now. But they're also going to take a shot at these live service games, which is, I think, another product of what we're seeing with these budgets. If a game costs $200 million to make, but you can make the game last for more than a decade even and continue to make money on it, then it won't be as big of a deal, you know, th that you had to spend so much money to get it really started out of the gate because you will easily accrue that amount over time, if not even from the initial sales, from the microtransactions. So it's, that's something that a lot of these companies have been chasing. So I'm not shocked to see Sony mention that they're going to do a ton of these live service games and just hope that one or two of them really hit. But let me know what you think about this down below because I was shocked to hear that Saints Row potentially could have cost over $100 million to make and that that's roughly the same amount that it costs to make something like Horizon Forbidden West. I think Guerrilla Games, I mean, it's a sequel coming from Zero Dawn. They had the formula figured out, but I got to give it up to uh, Guerrilla Games on this. Clearly, they're very talented. They know the production line and how to get these games done. So it, it definitely shows you when it comes to the talent level and their ability to manage and get these games out. But let me just think about all this 
down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.